Okay, it's Henry again, and this is the second work in progress video for the B Club Master Grade Zaku Kai conversion kit. And I'm about to start painting the kit. I got some new uh, primers from USA Gundam Store uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer Black and Mr. Mahogany Surfacer. I think I'm going to try these out on this kit. Um, I've used black and brown primer like way, way, way back in the day, like 10 years ago when I was still using spray cans. But uh, this will be my first time using the actual Mr. Color black and brown primers. I think they're going to look pretty good, so I'll give these a shot. So I'm just getting a bit of masking done now, uh, detail on the underside of the skirt armor, inside of the elbow area. Uh, also, one major thing I'm going to have to mask is the uh, lower legs. Now, I've got detail on here, but uh, let's see, that is the left side, it's the right side, so give me this one. So what's going on here is... I'll be putting this on here, and then, let's see, this part is going to go on here. I've got a really big seam line right there that's going to have to be glued shut and then uh, use some putty to fill that gap. So got a little bit of masking tape there and then what I'll do is I'll wrap the rest of that inner frame up with masking tape then glue this shut, putty it, sand it down then paint this lower leg and then I can remove all the masking tape and the colors will be separated.
Okay, so I've got the uh, the lighter shade of camouflage done. I've got two different shades. I uh, decided to do a darker camouflage for the torso and skirt armor and then a lighter camouflage for the legs and arms and head. And uh, usually when I do camouflage I do some masking like either with masking tape or with the liquid uh, masking solution. But this time I wanted to do kind of a World War II style uh, just kind of airbrushed on camouflage. So I think it actually turned out pretty well. I'm quite happy with it. So I got that and now I'm just removing this masking tape from the legs since I had to paint the inner frame first and then glue this lower leg armor on and then fill in this uh, enormous seam line that was running right there and it actually disappeared quite nicely. Did have to use some putty on that but not too awfully much trouble. Okay, and I am in the middle of doing the decals now. Uh, I did gloss coat everything because all these uh, greens and browns and tans that I used to paint the kit were all military colors, so they were all flat. And I didn't want to risk getting a silvering up under my decal, so I went ahead and sprayed some future or pledge now, used to be called future on uh, everything just so we can get a nice it's not super glossy but it's glossy enough that I don't have to worry about any decal silvering so definitely not something I want to have to deal with so these decals are all just actually coming from a few different places some of them are left over from Bandai kits some of them are third party decals uh, this Xeon symbol right here actually came from the Mega Size Zaku. I just cut off the Shar Aznable part of the decal just so I could get the Xeon symbol. Uh, same thing with this 21 actually. And then I've also got some uh, some Wave X decals I've been using. Uh, let's see, some high Q parts, decals, just for caution markings. And I've got the uh, 0080 uh, official Gundam decal set I use for like Cyclops team logos and stuff like that, Xeon symbols. Actually I don't think I used any of those Xeon symbols but anyway you get the idea. So going relatively light. Uh, I think here lately my last several kits I've gone pretty light on the decals so I don't want to get it looking like a Kotoki kit or anything but just enough to have some on there and then after uh, all these decals dry I'll go in with the good old hobby knife and scratch those up a little bit okay so like I said 
just going to go in and do a little bit of damage on these decals because I'm going to be doing some weathering. It only makes sense that the decals, or the markings rather, would also get damaged. And it doesn't take a lot, just a hobby knife and a little bit of pressure is enough to scratch up these decals a bit. Just where this kind of stuff would get rubbed off in real life. Just like so. Alright, so now I'm in the middle of doing the wash. Uh, I kind of mixed Mr. Weathering Color Ground Brown and the Sandy Wash together in about a 50-50 ratio. Because I want it to be brown, but I didn't want it to be too dark of a brown. Because I didn't want to uh, darken this color scheme very much. So I'm just doing an all over wash with a nice large flat paintbrush. Make sure to get in here as well. And this should really help the color scheme just come together. That's it, just about every time I've ever used a wash. I'm always really pleased with how it just brings all the colors together. It kind of acts like a filter at the same time, depending on how much you uh, wipe away the excess. See, like, uh, I got the shield here, and what I'm going to do is just, oops, take a paper towel and pull down, because I want to leave uh, some streakiness, so I'm just pulling down in the direction of gravity, so those streaks will remain, but what it does, it, uh, not only fills in your panel lines and stuff, but it also kind of uh, stains the overall color scheme, tints it with that uh, kind of brownish tint, and really if, if you wipe away enough of it, you can get rid of that, so it, it really all depends on how much you want to wipe the wash away, and that'll determine how much of a uh, filter you leave on there. But I'm wanting to leave a nice bit on there so I can get some of those streaky effects. So I'm not going to wipe off too awfully much. So I think that looks just about right. It's kind of tinted the camouflage brown a little bit. Got some streaks on there and those white decals aren't so stark white anymore, which is also a plus when you're doing a weathered uh, color scheme. Alright, I did want to do a little bit of silver dry brushing on like the inner frame stuff. Like, for example, this knee joint. Just kind of lightly going over that to accent those edges. just to make that stand out a bit. Also, on things like the rifle, I definitely wanted to do some dry brushing on this. And I decided I wanted to have some mud effects on the feet. So I've got some Mr. Weathering color and just mixed in some different color pigments with it. And I'm just sort of splotching this onto the feet. Just around the bottom edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a two-layer approach to this. 
I'll have the dry mud further up and then I'm going to go back with this darker color and add some wet mud and it should be able to uh, give the illusion that some of this mud is has been on here a little bit longer and has started to dry and some of the mud is a bit more wet and fresh alright so now you see I'm putting on this darker colored mud and it's giving the illusion that there's some wet mud on there below the dry mud Okay, and after the top coat, Izaku Kai is finally done. And it came out overall, the color palette is a bit darker than I originally intended. Like the dark colored camo on the torso looks fine, but I think the lighter colored camo on the arms, legs, and head turned out a little darker than I originally intended, but it doesn't look bad, so. Uh, the weathering actually turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, I put a lot more emphasis on streaking and uh, that kind of like rust stains and that kind of stuff than I did on chipping. Uh, I just sort of lightly went over it with uh, a sponge and a brush to do a little bit of chipping, but not very much at all. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. The decals look good. Especially, I think the ones on the shield turned out particularly well. Need a little bit of a zoom in on this. So yeah. A lot of masking on this kit. Uh, mainly just detail masking. Little stuff like these little thrusters. And uh, like stuff on the backpack. Things like that. Uh, the camouflage I just did by freehand. Didn't have to do any ca uh, masking for that at all but overall I'm pretty pleased with it. There's the mud effects on the feet. They turned out okay. I think they might have turned out a little bit better if I had used a sponge or something, but I think they look alright. See, I did use a uh, one of these Wave HI parts for the Mono Y because the on the original kit, the mono eye was just molded into the head, and you just had to paint it pink. So I <clears throat> drilled that out, and then put a little clear pink lens in there. I think it looks a bit better. Kit does come with a few accessories. I uh, got the Heat Hawk. Didn't do camouflage on it. I just did it in a uh, light shade of green. Used the same, the lightest green that I used on the uh, camouflage. Uh, alternate hands. Really, really good looking hands on this kit. Very good. And then for, it comes with an extra grenade, like it's got the three on the side skirt, right there. But then he comes with an extra grenade that's the handles extended out a bit, so I guess you can have him 
holding in his hand or something. And oddly enough, he comes with a second grenade, like in the end of the rifle. Right there, you see that little bit of yellow? He's got a little grenade launcher on the end of the rifle. Comes with an extra little uh, yellow grenade. Not really sure what you're supposed to do with that. I guess it's kind of like the perfect grade Zaku that comes with a single bullet for the machine gun. It's just kind of weird. Anyway, so overall, I'm pretty pretty pleased with it. It kind of has a uh, Kazuhisa Kondo sort of look to it, and that's really kind of the vibe I'm into lately. The uh, grungy camouflage World War II looking mobile suits. So pretty pleased with this and I'm definitely going to be doing some more stuff like this in the future. Uh, I want to experiment with different types of camouflage. Like this is my first time doing the uh, freehand airbrush camouflage and I'm definitely going to be trying that on some more stuff in the future. So that about does it for this video and this project and with that I'll see you guys next time.